Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What up, what up, what up? Welcome in Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary, running solo again this evening, but we got to talk some college football. Of course, today was National Signing Day, so we've got a lot to get into, of course. Uh, we got to talk about Mark D'Antonio resigning from Michigan State. we got to talk about K.J. Costello moving east of the Mississippi from Stanford. Uh, but first, of course, the show always brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books along with incredible, incredible steakhouses, golf courses, great shows coming through town all the time. Uh, go check it out for yourself. Find more information on it over at tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. All of our picks, previews, podcasts, uh, videos, social media platforms, etc. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Uh, you can find my college basketball gambling picks over there. So far on the season, as of right now, I am 146, 108, and 8 which is a 57.46% winning percentage, that is profitable. If you are a $5 better, you bet 5 bucks on every game that I give you, you would be up over $120 right now. Now, obviously, it is a long game. We are trying to bet against a number, but you can go check it out for yourself. Keep up with what we're doing over at winningcureseverything.com. Uh, let's jump into the topics of the day. The first topic here... Signing day. National signing day. Number one recruiting class in the country is Georgia. And we'll roll through the top ten really quickly. Georgia ended up number one. Number two was Alabama. Number three, Clemson. Number four, LSU. Number five, Ohio State. Number six, Texas A&M. Number seven, Auburn. Number eight, Florida. Number nine, Texas. And then the surprise class, number ten, Tennessee, who started out the day at number 14, jumped all the way up to nine at one point, uh, ended up at 10. Uh, but with that, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the top 10 classes were all SEC classes. Now, that is pretty impressive. Alabama and Clemson were the only schools with a 93 plus average per player. Uh, Georgia, just shy of that, 92.96 average. Alabama, 93.56. Clemson, 93.45. LSU 92.84, and so on down the line. Uh, Ohio State had 91.8, A&M 91.13, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, all in all, good day for everybody involved. There weren't a lot of surprises in this. Uh, I think the biggest disappointment out of all of it was USC. They still got nothing done, even in the late period. Uh, kind of surprising. I mean, they, they finished with the number 10 class in the Pac-12. They are way, way down. I think they're in the 90s. I want to say they finished in the 90s, um, but I'm not going to go back that far. I mean, that's just, that's absurd. Uh, there, you should never, in any circumstance, be ranked in the 90s in recruiting at USC. They got no five stars. They only got two four stars. They needed a running back badly in this class. They got nothing. So USC, in a lot of trouble here. Uh, Clay Helton, you know, he may be able to win next year, but this class is going to come back to haunt them at some point. Uh, not a good day for them. Arkansas made a big-time jump. Arkansas started, I believe, at, like, number 113 on the day before Sam Pittman was hired and finished at number 30. They got 21 commits, got four four-stars, 17 three-stars. Uh, same number of commits as Utah, but they were one spot behind... Uh, and I don't understand how these things work. I don't get it. But the the star average, they actually have a better average per player than Utah does. But that is what it is. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how exactly 247 does these things. But Arkansas finishes with the number 30 class in the country. That is one ahead of Maryland, two ahead of UCLA. Not too shabby for Sam Pittman and that bunch. Uh, the, the only surprise of the day, really, McKinley Jackson... Uh, choosing Texas A&M over Alabama, um, he is, I mean, he's, he's going to be a great player. 
Uh, had Alabama gotten him, they would have taken the number one class, but because he went to A&M, uh, that gives A&M the number six class in the country in the composite. And, I mean, good job by, uh, by Jimbo Fisher. He ends with two five-stars, 13 four-stars. Uh, all in all, you know, the, the rich get richer, right? Uh, outside of the top six classes, the only schools to get multiple five-stars were Oregon, and that was it. Oregon got three five-stars, but they only took 22 commits. Uh, seven of them were four-stars, 12 or three-stars. So Oregon, Mario Cristobal doing some, some really good things there. Uh, all in all, good day. Good day. Not a ton of surprises other than USC and then uh, how highly Tennessee jumped up, up to number 10, and Arkansas jumping up to number 30. Let's go ahead and move on to Mark D'Antonio. Now, I don't know. I, I, I don't know exactly when I started calling for this, but it looked to me early in the season that he would be retiring as head coach at Michigan State after this season. And once we got going in the offseason and nothing ever happened, I assumed, okay, well, he'll just be back next year. Like He's he's not ready to hang it up. He wants to give it one more go-round, and we'll see what happens. But that was not the case. Uh, the way that this went down, he was deposed for a lawsuit uh, that was against him and the school for wrongful termination by a former employee and he resigned hours after that defendant uh, accused Antonio of NCAA violations, among other things. Now, he says it's a bunch of mess. It doesn't matter. It's whatever. I, I think all of this, all the stuff that's been weighing with the Larry Nasser stuff and, and whatnot that went on at Michigan State, how his name was brought in and a lot of this, there's a lawsuit against him. The team has not been performing well the last couple of seasons, last three seasons, really. He is he looks tired. He just looks tired. He looks like he doesn't want to be there. And I, not that he ever really looked enthusiastic or anything, but this looked, he aged so much in the last three seasons. And I think that it just finally wore on him and he was ready. Now, it's also convenient. Obviously, January 15th, there was a clause in his contract that if he was still head coach on January 15th, 2020, that he would get a $4.3 million bonus for still being the head coach. Now, this was obviously uh, contracted. It was negotiated, all this kind of mess. And I don't believe that he just stayed on this late just for the bonus. I don't think that had anything to do with it. But uh, you, you, can't, you can't fight with facts, right? January 15th, he got a $4.3 million bonus, and then he decides to retire, well, resign. I think I think resign was the actual terminate, or, uh, uh, terminology. But he decided to leave his job as head coach at Michigan State just a couple of weeks after that uh, contracted bonus. And the day before signing day makes it even weirder. There's something fishy about the way that this went down and the timing of it. Now, I understand maybe you're trying to do the players a favor. You don't want them to go ahead and sign, which there were not that many that had not already signed letters of intent, right? A lot of them had already done, and they didn't have a, a great class anyway. They didn't have a big class. But it, there, was, there was not a lot to finish up on National Signing Day for them. I think they had three guys that they had to sign today. Uh, maybe he just wanted to let them know beforehand, hey, you're going to be you know playing for somebody else. <laughs> Excuse me. But... Uh, but I don't know. I, I'm not sure exactly what to think of this. Uh, I think you're going to hear some some crazy reporting coming out of there, uh, some crazy stories, some crazy rumors, and I am here for them. I cannot wait. I am looking forward to, to seeing exactly what kind of stuff they dig up on this. Um, so after that, now with Michigan State, we get to decide, well, what is the next go-round? Who are we going after next, Right. Pat Narduzzi released on National Signing Day a video, and I don't know if you've seen The Wolf of Wall Street, but if you have, Leonardo DiCaprio at one point he's being uh, taken out of his company that he's built, right? The FBI has come in, and they are removing him 
as the president of this company. And he gets up on, on the stage and he's announcing that he's leaving. And he says, you know what? I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. And he screams and he's, I'm not leaving. Narduzzi had somebody Photoshop his head onto Leonardo DiCaprio's head. And it's Narduzzi saying, I'm not leaving. And I live for this kind of content. I love this stuff. I'm glad that coaches have a sense of humor. It was fantastic. It was very well done. Uh, It was nice to see that come out. So Narduzzi, who everybody assumed would be next in line at Michigan State, will not be the guy. There's all sorts of ugly stuff going on at Michigan State. The NCAA violation rumors or or allegations uh, by this defendant, that doesn't help matters. Uh, How late it is in the process... I mean, we're already into February. That doesn't help the situation. Uh, I'm going to assume that it will be somebody that is already on staff. You know, everybody talks about Luke Fickle. I, I think if Fickle were going to take the job, like, it would have to be really, really fast. I mean, you'd have to make a decision basically by this weekend, before this weekend. And what coach would want to do that when they just got finished with a a signing class. So I don't think it's going to be an active sitting head coach. They may go interim for a year because this is a very strange situation. I mean, D'Antonio leaves as the all-time winningest coach in Michigan State history. He had six 10-win seasons. Um, He did a lot of good things, but obviously he was on the decline, kind of the same way that Frank Beamer was on the decline at at Virginia Tech. But people still look favorably uh, favorably on D'Antonio. So... If you go interim for a year, maybe that takes off a little bit of the pressure of having to follow a legend. Maybe. But I don't know what sitting head coach would leave right now. I mean, they just, you know, Matt Campbell, everybody assumes that he's going to end up taking a Big Ten job eventually. But I I don't think this is the right time for that. So I'm I'm a little curious. I'm very curious to see who they're going to end up with. Let's, uh, Let's move on. Last topic of the day. Of course, I'm doing these shows solo. Uh, Chris is in Disney World. He will be back next week. And, uh, and we will be gearing up talking about college basketball, et cetera, et cetera. Um, lots to discuss with that, of course. KJ Costello is transferring, graduate transfer, to Starkville for his last season. He's going to Mississippi State. He's going to go play for Mike Leach. And, yes, you can look at the academic stuff, right? Well, he's leaving Stanford to go to Mississippi State. Mississippi State does not have a, a very high academic regard uh, by the public. But they do have a coach that understands how to get quarterbacks to the NFL. His system works for that. His system is great for quarterbacks. Um, obviously, everybody knows Gardner Minshew, Luke Falk. Those guys have made it in the end. Not, not made it, but they made it too the NFL, through his system. K.J. Costello playing in a power system with Stanford. He doesn't have a lot of opportunities to showcase his skills. But you are going to get plenty of opportunities to showcase, and you're going to get a chance to show that you can make every single throw, and you get to do it in the toughest conference in the country. Wins and losses don't really matter in this spot. The only thing that does matter is... Going out and showing what you can do. So if you want to get ready for the NFL, you go play for the guy who everybody that is making noise in the NFL, all these different offenses with this high-powered mess, uh, all of it's based back to what Leach started doing two decades ago, maybe even longer. So I think it's a smart move. I mean, Washington State's passing offense has been top five every year since 2013. That is pretty remarkable. I think it's a smart move by K.J. Costello. Uh, go to the toughest division in football, see what you got. See what you can do with this coach in this conference, in this division. Because you're going to get to test it against Alabama, against LSU, against Texas A&M, against Auburn, against, you know, you name it. I uh, I think it's a good move. I think it's a good move. All right, that is going to wrap it up for today. Uh, keep an eye out. We are going to discuss in the very near future. I was hoping we could announce this week. I don't know if we can finishing up a few things, but 
we will be in Tunica for the first two days or the round of 64 um, for the NCAA tournament. So keep an eye out for that. Obviously, I'll have uh, another podcast coming tomorrow, et cetera. We will talk many, many things. I'm looking forward to it. Chris will be back from Disney very soon, uh, and he'll be back on with us again next week. So we do appreciate you guys. If you're listening to the podcast, make sure that you hit subscribe. Make sure you leave a nice five-star review. That always helps us out. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Make sure and comment. Tell us what you think about these stories. We love to hear you guys' opinions on it. Um, go to tunicatravel.com. Tunicatravel.com is the website to find more information about Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. I think that's going to do it. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Go to tunicatravel.com. We appreciate you guys, and we will see you all next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.